welcome from the People's Charter, Patrick Sikorsky. Thank you, Patrick. Comrades, brothers, sisters, uh, Pat Sikorsky, uh, RMT as well as People's Charter. Uh, we uh, were in on the beginning of it, and uh, there are several national unions affiliated to it still. But I'll come back to that in a second. I went up to Liverpool, uh, and this is not deliberate by the way, Len, uh, the other day, uh, and addressed uh, the Liverpool Five branch of the union. And there's a report there from cleaners uh, that do the cleaning uh, on the west coast of uh, a young man working for a cleaning company at Lime Street, and the hours were as follows. 75 hours in the first week, off for the third, second week, 75 hours for the third week, and 75 hours for the fourth week. Reason being, that's how they make their money, obviously, they understaff every contract and therefore there are not people there to do it. Austerity is with us. The combination of that, plus the fact that I, I could pl pluck one out of the air, maybe, half of young black people between the ages of 16 and uh, 24 are unemployed, on the dole, with nothing facing them as a proper future. We have a situation that we know all about in terms of the banks, but what perhaps is not clear, although The Guardian seeks to sh shed some light on it this week with its seven million people who are in work but in poverty as well. We know that the incendiary material is there. What we must do now is mobilise the mass movement for the 20th of October and a genuine broad-based mass movement against austerity. And I say not austerity light in two weeks' time, or maybe two years' time, or something of that sort. In other words, half the dosage of austerity, and then prolong the administration of the death penalty for four or five years. But people who are opposed to austerity now, and will oppose all the austerity now. We cannot have people coming up and say, oh well, Ed Balls has won the debate about austerity. He hasn't, he's not won it for that lad in Liverpool and he's not won it for the unemployed people throughout every city, town and in the countryside that we live in. It needs mass organisation and only as Len said uh, in the way that he did by describing the fight back that his people are waging now against austerity through the union. The only show in town at the moment is the 20th of October because we forced the TUC. I don't think they were terribly happy about it necessarily. We forced the TUC to call this day and we have to make it as big if not bigger otherwise of course all those forces of the media and the opposition and the people who will austerity upon us to shoulder the burden of the crisis of capitalism will say there you are they're not really up for it are they they're not up for a fight and we've got to make sure that that call therefore for this movement has to happen whether the TUC likes it or not, and despite the TUC, if they don't like it. Because I have to say they failed the test last autumn because there was a mass series of strikes on pensions and they never called a movement together to actually unite that. And there should have been a day of general strike action, in my view, last autumn for the pensions dispute because it was quite possible to mobilise people for that and it would have worked. Therefore, what we have to do is we have to shoulder the burden the organisations at the core, the trade unions, have got to shoulder that burden. We've got to convene the mass movement together, coming out of the mobilisation of the 20th and then going forward from that. Yes, we do have a charter. It's a charter without a mass movement. That's the real problem, just as we haven't got a mass movement yet around the fight against austerity. And therefore, what we have to do is make sure that the demands of that charter form the basis for a fight back. And the fight back has to be centred on this thorny question of who owns the banks. I don't mean who's paid for them to keep them and prop them up, which we certainly have. I mean who actually owns and controls those banks. Because it's a banking crisis, it's a financial crisis of capital, and unless we have a movement that's prepared to take those on and make sure that we mobilise the sufficient people on the streets to fight that movement and fight to actually win and remove the government, then we will continue not to be able to mobilise the financial powers and the mobilise the wealth that we still create in this country for the interests of the vast majority and not the very few who control it at the moment. Thank you. Thank you very much.